Hi y'all, I wanted to show you a few things about my progress of designing my tiny home in SketchUp. I've done some really neat things. First of all, what I really ought to show you is uh, peeling back the layers. So let me select all the layers, uh, turn them on. A lot of things are going to go bye-bye. Um, and I'm going to zoom out here. The first thing I'm going to remove is two kind of bounding boxes. Well, what I started with was down here was the trailer frame at a height of 24 inches above ground. You'll notice it doesn't show any wheels because that's uh, later. And it doesn't show the tongue because I just didn't feel like drawing this in. It didn't affect the footprint of the house. And uh, the wheels will go somewhere along in here. And uh, so uh, that's where I started. And that's also why you don't see the wheels since they're the only thing they interact with is the uh, frame. Um, it uh, isn't a worry for me right now that I don't actually have the wheels on the trailer. Uh, however, this, uh, this kind of shaded area on three sides um, that extends beyond the uh, house, you'll notice that that, uh, that is the bounding box for what is... Um, illegal to tow down the road in California and Oregon and a few other states. But because, um, and the difference, most people here uh, eight and a half feet this way by 13 and a half feet this way. There, that's the kind of the bounding box, eight and a half here, 13 and a half here. Well, it turns out in California that those, that, those dimensions, eight and a half by 13 and a half, are um, the kind of the lowest common denominator for all the states that you can drive between. So uh, it doesn't include Hawaii, but since you can drive between Alaska and uh, and the lower 48, I think that is included. However, California and Oregon, the states that I guess are 99% of the time where this will be, and it will be built, etc. and so forth, um, their height limit is 14 feet. So I'm going, oh cool, I just gained an extra half inch of space inside the house. So that's the bounding box. Anyway, I'm going to get rid of that now and I'm just going to slowly peel these layers back until I get to some more details I want to show you. So we're going to take away that bounding box. Now you'll see these other ends, you know, that kind of sticking out. It's another kind of L-beam shape that doesn't have any volume. Those are um, if you imagine, uh, hold on, let me just take a couple of others out. Well, let me come back to that. Um, as you can see, I even created a texture for my Tyvek. I haven't built outward from that. Oh, you know, I ought to go back to the bounding box a bit and talk about the roof frame. Uh, bounding box. You'll notice that right now the roof rafters are extending outside of the bounding box. And there's a simple reason for that. I've made a few changes in the roof pitch, and it's a real pain <laughs> here in SketchUp to do that. And as a result, um, the last time I did it, essentially what you do on the roof pitch is you start out with a horizontal rafter, and then you uh, and you attach it to your ridge board here. Then you bend it down at the proper pitch, and then start taking away from it because when you do that geometry starts intersecting and that's another royal pita. Anyway, last time I changed the pitch which was to accommodate a uh, roof window that is egress rated. Yes, I want to be able to get out from the loft in a fire situation if my normal rat out is blocked by the fire. Um, and it turns out that the minimum size window that would be officially rated as egress uh, was too big for a lower pitch. I started out at 3 and 12, then I found out the roofing products I was looking at didn't, um, weren't okay to use on a 3 and 12, so I went to a 4 and 12 and twiddled along there for a while, and then all of a sudden I found out, started looking into the details of the roof windows, and went, oops, at a 4 and 12, the distance available for the window, which was basically draw a line extend that line out there, you know, um, eh, more like that, parallel to this, meeting that, parallel to this line, meeting that point, and then measuring down. Um, 
the roof window would have been, if I'd gone with, uh, there's no egress window that I could have gone to that didn't, wouldn't have ended up intersecting the wall, and I wanted to be solely contained in the ceiling. So I had to go to a 6 and 12, and uh, I did most of the work on the 6 and 12. I just haven't trimmed out the ends of the rafters yet and done the details at the roof edge. That can be done later. Um, anyway, so anyway, that I think is all I need to show with the bounding box. Uh, so, you know, I've got the, uh, the uh, building paper, uh, which is where in this list to take it off. Yeah, the building wrap. And then uh, you'll notice I'm showing the next layer as we peel the onion here is the shear walls. And you'll notice one of them seems to have disappeared. That's kind of an artifact of dealing with the building paper. Um, for the purpose of viewing and transparency, having, I mean, from the point of view, the dimension of my building, the thickness of the building paper has no importance whatsoever. But in the SketchUp model, it's got to have some thickness, and so I made it so thin that when I'm working with it and the shear panels at the same time, sometimes uh, things go awry, and I somehow lost the shear panel here on uh, this side, which is why uh, you don't see it. Uh, but there will be one there. That's another detail I'll be able to come back and uh, clean up. Anyway, so now let's, uh, let's take out the shear panels, and we're getting more towards uh, something that's actually going to give you some idea of what I'm doing. Let me, uh, I'm going to hide that and uh, so that you can take a kind of peek inside. But one thing I ought to let you know is kind of the orientation of my model. Um, okay. This kitchen, the, the, the refrigerator may move, but essentially the front door is probably going to be on this side, and the tongue end of the trailer is the other end. Though it may end up uh, in here somewhere. Um, anyway, but you walk in, and there's what in a regular house would be called a great room. However, it's kind of fun, it's kind of funky to call uh, a room in a tiny house a great room, so I'm going to call this the multi-purpose room. Anyway... And, uh, okay, let, let's take care of this funny shaded thing here. What that is, is when I add the wheels, there's going to be a projection that comes up, the wheel wells, somewhere in this area. Uh, I'm hoping to do a weight and balance calculation and then specify my trailer with the wheels in the appropriate place so I have good front and back ballast, you know, balance and don't exceed the uh, tongue weight, um, which is why I haven't drawn the actual wheel wells yet. But I've left this as kind of a guideline, which I'm now going to remove so that as I do details, I'll occasionally click them on and see if... Um, later on the wheel wells are going to interfere so badly with what I'm trying to do that I ought to find another place to do it. So um, let's get rid of the wheel wells in here somewhere. Okay, so now we're at the wheel wells in here somewhere. Okay, I'm going to hide the uh, front wall and the right wall so we can get a good peek inside. Uh, front wall frame and, oh, for orientation purposes, um, I'm, for right now, since I haven't defined the door, the wall that just disappeared, I'm calling the front wall, this wall's the right wall, that wall's the left wall, and that wall is the tongue end wall. And I did this because I wanted to talk about the house from the orientation of how I'm going to use it as a house, not from the orientation of how I'd use it as a trailer, which would change the nomenclature, that is. It, if I did it from the orientation of as it was being trailered, that would be the front. That is the thing that's exposed moving forward. The one I just disappeared would be rear. This would still be left and right uh, because you do it, or driver and passenger, whatever you want to say, if you're in a, if you're in a country that drives on the right. <laughs> um, 
Anyway, and then I'm also going to remove the what for me is the right side wall framing so we can get a better peek inside. Uh, I want to leave the roof framing here a second so I can kind of zoom in here on the loft and just show you that my loft height, let me pull up the measurement tool here. Oh, where's the measurement tool? Uh, measurement tool. The loft height is, uh, no, I want to be on this face. On the face. Uh, uh, shift. No, whoops. I need that. Uh, shift. Down to, come on. Yeah, it's not giving me the measurement I want. There we go. I've got seven and a quarter, seven, seven feet and a quarter inch. That's pretty darn good, isn't it? Um, hey, I didn't realize I'd gotten that good. Well, I haven't done the interior finishes in, but more important, um, uh, I've got, even at the sides of the loft, I've got Now I've got a good 16 inches there, which means, and that's just going to be at the edge of my bed, and it's steeply pitched enough that comes up. I'm comfortable with the sleeping loft and the height I placed on it. I think I ended up giving myself a uh, six foot six clearance between the framing of the uh, loft and the uh, and the interior floor down here. Um, Anyway, so this room is a great room. This is a sleeping loft. Um, back here is a room that is initially going to be an office. Um, let me show you this in its office configuration. Uh, let's see. Tools. Uh, oh, come on. How do I show this? View on the here we go toolbars. Uh, dynamic components. That's the one I want. I should have had this open. Okay, where'd my dynamics to come? No, oh, there, there it is. This is a Murphy bed desk. It's called a dynamic component in SketchUp, and I've done it just based on the manufacturer's dimensions, um, but that's closed. You know, when I first occupy this house, this is going to be my office, and I'll sleep up in the loft. Also, because this is a Murphy bed, as well as a desk, I haven't drawn in the mattress. Um, this is uh, where, if I do want to put up a guest, I can put up a guest in my own home. Um, <coughs> And uh, later on in my lifetime, when I can't, can no longer climb either, I haven't yet decided whether I'm going to do stairs or a ladder to the loft, but I'm, when I'm restricted to the first floor, then the loft becomes my guest bedroom, and I just use the office as an office and bedroom combination. Um, I leave so much strewn around the office these days that I really don't want to be going back and forth, which is why I, uh, why I plan to sleep in this loft to begin with. Um, this green area is something I just put in. It, it really represents against this wall, which is the left wall of the office, the area that I think I'm going to be able to, well, let me get, uh, let me get rid of the roof rafters, the roof framing. So I can give you a little bit of an upper view. So you see, I mean, as you can see, it doesn't have much thickness, but that's because I didn't care so much that extent as how it would interfere with the opening and closing of the bed. Um, but it represents uh, potential cabinetry areas, pull it out, other things. Another thing you'll notice is I'm showing my framing in two different colors. This color, uh, I don't want to cl keep clicking, that color is plain old standard construction fur framing, studs, etc. This darker color is uh, redwood, and it's redwood, and I've used it any place that I expect to have any of the uh, structure visible once all the interior finishes on. 
and uh, you'll notice that uh, because of these beams going all the way across, all of my interior walls aren't structural, which means I can make them really flimsy. Um, and what I've chosen to do is I've still I've kept with the two by four dimension because that means any I only need to put for privacy reasons or whatever, I only need to put a covering on one side of it, and the other side is going to be available to put in just little whatever I want to do in terms of storage in those niches. Uh, probably, in fact, I've already I've already bought my floor. It's a it's a uh, laminate product that just clicks together and floats. Really easy installation. Comes in about four foot long by I think. Eight inch wide strips? I don't know, but you know, and the deal was so good I bought too much of it and I'll be left with a lot left over and they'll end up being the shelves in all my little niches. Uh, what other interesting things? Oh, you see that? You see that Tesla? <laughs> uh, how best to show this? Okay, let me take away the, uh, the loft framing, furnishings, and floor so we can get a better look at the first floor all by its lonesome. Um, at some point, I, I think if I knew that Tesla's new home batteries were safe to use inside the conditioned space of your home, then this wouldn't be a tentative plan. I would be planning on them. Uh, you're looking at somewhere between 14 and 20 kilowatt hours of backup storage, even if I don't do anything solar. Um, and I expect in the next 5, 10 years that the ability to be interactive with the utility on those is going to be there so that um, when they have high demand, they can say, hey, can we uh, take some of your stored energy all of this, of course, electronically, and uh, buy it from you. And uh, I can say, you know, yes or no or whatever. But they're heavy. They're 220 pounds each, 100 kilograms, uh, which is why I, when I thought, gee, I really want a Tesla battery, I started first thinking outside of the house. But they're so damn deep that there's no way you're going to put them on the outside of the sidewalls because I have to stay within the towing width limit, and that would have squeezed down my interior space by that much. Um, you know, I could have put them on the tongue end wall up here outside, but the fact is, they aren't cheap, and I don't like the idea of a $3,000 roughly battery being exposed for uh, anybody with a wherewithal to try and steal something that weighs as much as, a, as, much as me to do. So I kind of said, okay, I can do them inside, uh, and I don't, but I don't really have any unconditioned areas. Anyway, so I can't put them outside, I can't put them, uh, and inside, you know, I didn't, you know, inside, the only balanced place I could have put it in terms of uh, left to right on the trailer, because they're going to be a real heavy thing in the weight calculation, would have been at either end, but doing just one of them at either end would have severely made, made the, the, the tongue problems and making sure that's a good weight uh, difficult, shall we say. So then I realized, you know, that uh, maybe try and put them somewhere near the wheels, balance left and right, and so there's that. And while they aren't a definite in there yet, they do have to do with the planning of my bathroom um, so that uh, I can put them in in the future. Uh, let's zoom in on the bathroom here. What you've got here is just a really sketchy outline of a Sunmar composting toilet. Now the toilet doesn't really have this extension, but because I've been using it to place it down just to check everything, that is what has to be kept clear in order to be able to remove the trays with the, re with the, with the completed composted material. Um, so, I mean, theoretically, I could bring this wall all the way up to there if I could find another place to this, for the sink. And, uh, oh, 
interesting thing in SketchUp. Uh, this is just a sink I kind of hand did. And the last thing I did before I showed you this was I moved the location of this wall by about uh, three inches. It used to be three inches to the left. Well, the sink didn't move, so now it intersects, but that's a detail I'll clean up later. So anyway, composting toilet sink, uh, Tesla thing, the, uh, the Murphy bed desk and how this room's going to become an office and a bedroom at the same time. Um, those are some of the things that are pretty firm in my design. Um, this area here, I haven't filled it in yet, is going to be a frick of a lot of storage, but this hallway that ends up is still going to be like three feet wide. And again, this goes into my whole design philosophy in that I want this to be a building that I can use until and unless I'm confined to a wheelchair. So while I can still climb stairs or ladders, whichever is the access to the loft, um, then you know that that's kind of one mode of my using this house as I as my decrepitude sets in. Once I can no longer access the loft, then uh, I still want to make sure that I can get around on the main floor. And the further restriction might be needing a uh, walker for balance. So, yeah, I'm going to be able to be in here with a walker, uh, though I haven't walled in the, uh, this side of the uh, toilet area yet. I will do that just for privacy reasons, but for access, once I'm walker bound, um, I'll probably, by that time, not be good at construction, get somebody just to tear out that wall. I'll probably build some sort of a real lightweight privacy screen on top of the finished floor so that once it uh, once it's torn out the finished floor is still a finished floor and not a little hole in the floor there. Well I guess that's about it. That's what I wanted to show you for now so I'm gonna stop this video. It turned out being a lot longer than I thought but what the heck. Uh, my first time doing this kind of a capture and first time introducing my tiny home so